Okay, next time you're looking to describe something as shiny, you're looking for something to compare it to, why not call it shiny as a droid? What is shiny as a droid? So shiny as a droid was uh, part of a series by Random House. I think this came out in 1986. There was this book about C-3PO and R2-D2. There was another book about uh, some of the Ewoks. Um, they were, I think they were called the, I think Random House called them like the touch me books. And basically what they meant by that was that on a number of the different pages, there were various things kind of like this, kind of like how there's a piece of plastic that reflects, you know, C-3PO's shiny droid armor. There were various things throughout the books that you could touch, see, experience, even scratch and sniff, right? So lots of fun things like this. Uh, it was a neat sort of experiential, um, you know, book for, for, uh, for young children, um, Probably in this case, probably inspired by the uh, Ewok and Droid cartoons, uh, which which were on at the time. Um, the interesting thing about them, by the way, though, is it's not really clear where they fit in the timeline. Uh, now, the Ewok version gives us some ambiguous clues that we can at least use to infer that. Well, if we don't know where it fits in the general timeline, we at least have a sense of it probably being somehow connected to the Ewoks cartoon itself. Now, in this case, although there was a Droids cartoon. Um, which I think ran right around the same time, 86 or so. Um, frankly, there aren't a lot of clues to indicate whether it was a part of that same era or not. There are, there are some interesting clues, which I'll talk about in just a second, uh, that kind of make you they're very intriguing. It's just not sure what to make of it. There are some timelines, though, on the net, like StarWarsTimeline.net, that actually has argued that, um, that what this is is probably a story that takes place right before Return of the Jedi. Um, I mean, I'm fine with that. I don't think that's terribly controversial, although I do think that it could probably fit in a number of different places. And to my knowledge, there isn't a lot beyond this book that really explains why it fits before episode six. Again, though, it totally can. Um, in terms of the story, it's sort of a, it's not really an adventure. It's almost a pre-adventure. And what I mean by that is C-3P and R2-D2 are on this planet, which interestingly, they never name. We do not know where they are, which is just totally intriguing to me. I'd love to know one day. Because um, you even see planets and moons and stuff in the background in some of the pages. Oh my God, I look, what are those? Love to know, right? Um, and the idea is before they can take off in their little ship, by the way, it's just them. They have their own ship. Apparently C-3PO is piloting. It's just really fascinating, right? Um, they need, apparently, according to the book, their space crystals for their ship to fuel it and so that they can take off. Okay. Um, and they eventually do, and, and here they are in the back in their in their spaceship, and R2-D2 is, is up in front, their C-3PO in the, in the cockpit. So really fascinating, right? Um, so you don't really see them get up to a whole lot, you know? Uh, you just see them sort of go to a few different areas on this planet looking for space crystals. And along the way, and this kind of comes back to the gimmick of the book, you know, in this case, for instance, well, they're looking for some crystals. Are there some crystals under here? Well, what this is, you can sort of peel this back. And it's, it's like a, almost not a pop-up, but it reveals something underneath. In this case, they find another monster. You know, does he have the crystals? And in this case, instead of this little patch just being part of the illustration, it's actually kind of fuzzy, it kind of feels like felt. So again, you, you're you not just, you know, it's more of an experience than just a traditional book. You're not just reading the text. You're not just following the illustrations, but you get to kind of feel what this little monster's like. Now, at the very end, again, the whole... The whole idea of the book is that they need to find space crystals, and uh, sure enough, there they are. You turn the next page, and uh, crystals are in the ship, and they uh, they take off. Now, one of one of the other intriguing things about the story, um, particularly as it concerns the timeline, is although you don't know where they are, you do know where they're going, and they're going to Tatooine. So that's cool, and I think that's one reason why it's probably safe to say, yeah, they're. Um, there, this probably does take place sometime before Return of the Jedi, and probably like right before Return of the Jedi, because it might be the case that they're going off to Tatooine so that they can go to Jabba's palace, you know, and then basically initiate the the events that you know uh, in the beginning of uh, Return of the Jedi. Okay, fascinating, right? But again, I mean, we know um, in both the movies as well as the rest of the Legends canon that these two characters were at Tatooine at other times, and of course, C three PO was created on Tatooine, right? So um, yeah, so I feel like it could really sort of go in lots of different places. Again, I mean, um, whereas the Ewok one, 
has some clues that it probably takes place at least within the same time period of the Ewoks cartoon, although there was a Droids cartoon. Um, that Droids cartoon chronologically takes place in between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. So, um, okay, so if, for instance, StarWarsTimeline.net is right about it being episode six sort of oriented, well then, of course, it couldn't be related to anything, you know, like the Droids cartoon, because that would put it, you know, 20 years or so um, in the past. Okay, so what are you going to do? Not really clear to me. Again, though, not so controversial that I mean I really worry about where it necessarily goes in the timeline, because the little glimpse we get into what they did on this planet is so inconsequential to the larger timeline. I don't, I don't think it really matters. This is one of those rare books that I'd say, um, get it for the novelty, get it for the, you know, the ability to sort of like be a conversation starter among your Star Wars friends. I mean, how many, how many actual books and not just sort of like children's activity books had things like scratch and sniff, right? How many sort of like books with original content contributing further glimpses, glimpses into legend canon had these like strange, strange gimmicks, right? Not a whole lot. So it's a neat conversation starter. It's a neat collectible. It's a neat piece of Star Wars history. Is it going to tell you anything essential that you didn't already know about the legends canon timeline? No, no, not really. But again, I'm a completist. I love to have it all which is why I have to have this, right? And the Ewoks one too. So I'll talk more about that at some point. And uh, yeah, just looking, look forward to talking a lot more about things related to this era. So um, there are other uh, books um, that are more directly connected, for instance, to the Droids cartoon, as well as the Ewoks cartoons. And there's quite a few of those. And the real challenge there is that it's kind of hard to know like what the full comprehensive list is. This whole era is really fascinating. Um, I mean, the further back you go, the more you realize, wow, there was a lot of stuff, like even from the start, you know, I mean, in the late 70s, I mean, we didn't just have like the Han Solo trilogy and the Lando Calrissian trilogy. We had more children's books like this as well. I'll be getting to all of them eventually. So in the meantime, yeah, Shiny is a droid. Check it out.